Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Uh, bienvenidos y bienvenidas. Welcome to Reforma LA Spanish Language Book Fair. My name is Celia Avila de Santiago and I am a senior librarian with the Los Angeles Public Library. This free event is open to librarians, educators, students, and professionals interested in serving Latino Spanish, and Spanish speaking communities. In this session of the series, we have Cinco Books, Scholastic, Candlewick Press, Penguin Random House Library Marketing, Latin American Booksource, and Vista Higher Learning, who will be featuring their new children and young adult Spanish language titles. But first, I would like to introduce my amazing colleague, Sheridan Casares. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Sheridan Casares, and I'm the Early Literacy Specialist at the Long Beach Public Library. Um, I am the one of the PIOs for the LA chapter of Reforma, and I'm super happy to be here today. And now we'll start with the book presentations. All slides and order sheets are available on our website, theformala.org backslash blog backslash book fair, which will also be in the chat. Uh, and they are available for you to download and take notes on. Our first presenter is Jenny, Jenny Lizarga from Cinco Books. Cinco Books is a corporate member of Reforma. For more information about this company and contact information, please visit our blog, reformala.org backslash blog backslash book fair, also in the chat. Feel free to add your questions to the comment box during the presentation and they will be answered at the end. As a reminder, these presentations are being recorded for future viewing. Welcome, Jenny. Thank you, Celia, and thank you, everyone. Uh, it's so nice to be here to um, have 20 minutes to share with you some of the books that we have now for children. And I'm going to share my screen right now. Give me one second. Let me find it. It's here. Okay. Okay. Um, like Celia said, my name is Jenny Lizarraga. For those who don't know me, I am the founder and director of Cinco Books. Cinco Books is a book distribution company based in Miami, Florida. We work with the school districts, public libraries, and independent bookstores across the country. We import books from Latin America, from Spain, and also books from uh, authors from the community that we consider are of interest for the school and that must be in the collections for the public libraries. Let me start today talking a little bit about the services that Cinco Books is offering. And I am stopping here a little bit because this year um, we did a couple of changes. We added some services. Um, we added cataloging and processing. This is going to be available, uh, it's already available for, especially for libraries that need cataloging and processing. We have seen a uh, demand on these services. We have been asked many times. So we decided um, to hire a cataloger in-house and to do our mark records and the processing in-house. The cataloging that we provide is usually a brief cataloging and it includes, um, it's um, for books in Spanish. So usually it's the first mark that you are going to see. Eventually we are going to be adding these marks to OCLC. So you will be able to see our records in WorldCat as well. Uh, we are offering the showroom virtual and in person. This is something that we added during the pandemic and it's been uh, very popular. So now we have decided to leave the showroom like um, every season. And it has to be scheduled at least with two weeks in advance so we can prepare and do the selection. Every showroom is custom made. So it means that uh, we will do a selection according to the topics of interest, the age range, uh, the type of books that you are looking for. And it's usually one or two hours. It's a private session. Um, and that's pretty much what it is. And it's for institutions only. So it would be for either public libraries, academic libraries, um, independent bookstores, and school districts. So now let me show you some of the books that we have in our collection. Vida de un Lapis. Vida de un Lapis comes from Argentina. 
uh, by Editorial Limonero. It's recently, recently published this year. The author is Nicolas Schaff. And it's a book about the origin of a pen where it came from and it all starts in Canada um, then uh, after many pens are made from a tree there is one particular pen that travels around the world with different people for different reasons and it explores also the different careers there is an encounter with um, with an architect then with a designer with a painter and many other careers in the world that, uh, that we are able to see the humanity uh, in those and uh, complications also. It's a book usually for eight to 10 years old and up. It has little text, um, completely illustrated, doesn't have that much text, but for the complexity of the topics and, and, the, and the story, it's recommended for those ages. Then I have Que Raro Clima. This is a translation from Finnish. And it's a book about climate change, global warming. These two uh, kids are trying to find out why the weather is so strange, why it's changing and why in places where there was you no know, rain in January, for example, now it's raining so bad. Uh, why they are floating. So it's a, it's a non-fiction book recommended for about eight to 10 years as well. Then Saburo. With Saburo, we are going to explore the Asian American heritage. I like this book very much because it explores the family context when it's composed for people from different places, like which, which is pretty much the case today everywhere. In this case, um, a child is telling the story that she's expecting um, to meet her grandfather that she has never met before. He lives in Japan and her, her grandmother lives in Argentina. And the grandmother has been telling stories about Saburo. Saburo is the name of the grandfather. So it's the whole story how she imagined Saburo in, in Japan. So it's a really heartwarming story. It's a paperback by Ana Luisa Stock and the publisher is Del Naranjo. And my next recommendation, I have a couple of board books that I want to show you. I have Vamos by Claudia Legnasi. This book is a simple book about movement. I like it very much for the uh, rounded corners of the book. And it's like very easy to read. For babies, recommended from zero years, you know, zero one month to five or four years old. Cuento Mi Cuerpo is about uh, the body to learn the name of the body from the same publisher, Tengo Un Librito. And this is more to introduce what is a book for a child, which is, you know, is, is very entertaining because books also become toys and objects of interest uh, from a very young age. And also in the four book series, I wanted to talk about diversity. These two books are not new releases, uh, but we carry them um, and we are promoting them because lately there is so much noise about, you know, banning books, uh, especially here in Florida. I am sure you have seen in the news that recently we have a, um, a law, a uh, legislation that is um, asking the schools not to talk about um, homosexuality or LGBT or not to say the word gay in the classroom. Um, so it's a uh, word, you know, it's silencing, it's um, censure, um, and it's damaging uh, the identity of kids and, and it's breaking hearts of families. So here, um, we need to do like our part 
with education and having materials available. That's the reason that I wanted to show you these books today. Pronto por la mañana, No es hora de jugar by Lawrence Chimel. These books were originally written in Spanish. However, they have been translated uh, into at least 17 languages now. And there was also a backlash about these two titles in um, Romania at the end of last year. Maybe you saw the um, articles in Publishers Weekly talking about it, that they wanted to ban and to find um, the publisher who was um, selling them in Romania. And they also wanted to find the bookstores who were selling them. Um, fortunately, uh, they didn't succeed. And uh, now the book can circulate freely, uh, but it was, you know, uh, it, all over the news and there were protests and a lot of movement to avoid this um, type of censure and, and hate speech, because at the end, that's what it is. Then we are going to move to Animal con todas las letras. This is a book about animals, of course, but is it really fun because it's to play with the syllables and to mix letters, syllables, and concepts. So it's really good to learn vocabulary, to talk about the jungle and about the animals in the jungle. The place where the situation happens is somewhere in Africa. And it's a, a book about a lot of comedy because it's these animals losing their names and their colors and they lose their colors and their shape when they lose their name so it's really fun to to read it's perfect for storytelling so it's highly recommended the author is adrian yeste and it's a new publication as well from del naranjo also in the new releases la jirafa sin gafas and this is for readers who are more into rhyming and uh, poetry is a good book for storytelling but again with the rhyming so it would, it would be a lot different than the book that I just talked about Animal con todas las letras La jirafa sin gafas is more like short stories in every two pages that uh, don't have to do anything one with the other but it can be used to play games and to do, you know, a lot of activities either in the classroom or during an activity at the library. The other is Pablo Inver and it's also a new publication by Del Naranjo. Como despertar a una foca is a book for babies. It is a book about motherhood. It's the first one of a series of five, but this is the only release. It was released last year. And the author Liliana Orozco, she's from Colombia. She lives here in Miami and is one of the authors from the community that we are supporting and that we believe that um, her talent needs to be you know, exposed everywhere. The book contains a code, a QR code for a song. So it's a little bit interactive, but it doesn't have to be like a subscription or anything. So it's with any smartphone. Uh, you just scan the code and download the, the song. Como despertar a una foca. Soy un dinosaurio. This book in particular, I think is an inspiration either between Metamorphosis by Kafka and also Turning Red, the recent movie, because it's a, it's a young kid that when he wakes up in the morning, he's a dinosaur. And he doesn't know why, he doesn't know what's going on, and he's so scared, everyone is so scared. I really like the illustrations in this book because they are so diverse, very representative, which is super important in children's book. We need to have that always. And uh, at the end of the story, you'll see that who is telling the story is not the kid, it's not Mario, it's the sister. The little sister has been watching everything going on and she's the one telling the story, but you realize that at the end. So this is book, this book is also very good for storytelling and for games, not for going to sleep at night. I don't think that's going to happen. So just a warning. Then El Viaje del Abuelo. And you know, uh, the times that we are living today is uh, also a good idea to have handy uh, resources and books about grief. 
to understand what grief is and how to move on, how to understand and, and how to canalize those feelings. In El Viaje del Abuelo, uh, is a young boy that he used to have a very close relationship with his grandfather, but he passed away. And then he doesn't know at the beginning how to deal with his, his, his you know, his grandparent not being there anymore for him. So he learns to manage with the memories and with the help of his mother, how to navigate the grief and loss. This book is by, by Ana Belén Hormiga. She's from Spain. This book is by Diego Pune Ediciones in Tenerife, the Canary Islands. And uh, what I like about it is the passion and the commitment that Ana Belén Hormiga has with this story for her is really very close to her, very personal. And she has been doing a lot of like workshops in schools, especially in Spain. <clears throat> Mi abuela tiene un león. And this book in particular has been awarded this year recently at the end of January by Fundación Cuatro Gatos. It's one of the books awarded this year. Um, it has beautiful illustrations by Maria Elena and the text is also by Maria Elena. Um, it's a story about Alzheimer, empathy and family and how the grandmother is losing her memories, but at the same time, memories for when she had young children that are no grown, grown ups, um, how she's seeing those children in every kid. And her grandkid is going to understand how to is to play with her grandma, like if she was a, a young girl. It's a book full of love and with a very unexpected ending. I think it's really nice and a beautiful story to talk in the family, starting five years or even four years old and up. <clears throat> Mi Gato Mostacho is another book um, to talk about grief. Lula Mayorga from Nicaragua and uh, Libros para Niños de Nicaragua is the publisher of this title. It's also to face, you know, the loss and the grief. In this case of Migato Mostacho and how this little girl is dealing with it. I wanted to show you this book because I had El, eh, el Abuelo, eh, which is uh, a young boy as a protagonist. And in this one is a little girl. So it's, you know, good to have uh, both protagonists. Then... A graphic novel. I didn't want to leave this one uh, out for this presentation today. El Pan de la Guerra um, is, uh, this story is based in Kabul in Afghanistan in 2001. And uh, there, is a, there is a movie about it in El Pan de la Guerra. This is a translation from the English. The author Deborah Ellis from Canada was awarded with the original version of this um, of this um, uh, of this book, but this is the graphic novel translated in, in Spanish. And my last but not least, El Alumno Nuevo by Pablo De Santis. This book is also awarded this year by Fundación Cuatro Gatos. It's a beautiful explanation to explore and to accept our imperfections, how not to look to be perfect all the time and how to know that being imperfect is somehow being perfect. And it's a very cute story about these two kids that go together to school and there is a, a new kid uh, coming to classes and he's just too perfect and nobody can understand why. Um, I don't want to spoil the story so I'm going to leave it um, there. But it's about life changes, self-awareness, and um, very good to explore with kids starting five years old and up. And that was my presentation. I think I am good in time. If anyone has any questions, I will be here. I'm going to uh, stop uh, sharing my screen.
Thank you so much, Jenny. Um, that was Jenny from Cinco Books. Uh, our second presenter is Maria Dominguez from Scholastic. And for more information about this company and contact information, please visit reformala.org backslash blog backslash book fair. And remember to use our hashtag, hashtag reformala book fair. Uh, welcome, Maria. Um, feel free to add your questions to the chat during the presentation, and they'll be answered at the end. Take it away. Thank you. Um, so, Maria Dominguez, thank you so much for inviting me uh, again to present on behalf of um, Scholastic. Um, I, it's always an honor to present for librarians, for distributors, for teachers, for students. Um, and it's Scholastic's mission of encouraging education and the growth of all children is more important than ever. And at Scholastic in Espanol, uh, we try to uh, publish books that not only entertain the readers, but that also reflect who they are. So that's, that's what we try to do. Um, uh, we publish about 30 titles a year for trade. So that means, you know, the books that go into the libraries, but around 80 titles for all our, <clears throat> I'm sorry, for all our channels. That means, you know, for the education group, for the clubs, for book fairs, and um, we publish around um, 30 ebooks a year. And these are for books for kids of all ages from very young to young adults. The first title that we have in the list is um, it's a picture book. It's a bilingual book by David Heredia, the author and illustrator, David Heredia. And the, this book introduces um, preschoolers to 50 men and women of color who have changed the world. These are people who have um, changed their communities in one way or the other, and they have had an impact and have broken boundaries. And we think that it's very important that from a very early age that we um, tell the kids, you know, who, they can get inspired with, you know, men and women that have, even though they, they come from the same background, have been able to, to do much well in the world. And, and you could find figures from um, Toussaint Louverture, who is the leader of the Haitian revolution to justice, Sonia Sotomayor. Here is a, a spread of the book, of the interiors of the book. You can see the beautiful colors. Um, you can see the, you know, Ramon Emeterio Betances, uh, the father of the Puerto Rican independent movement. He's holding the Urbino Puerto Rican flag. Um, and this is a beautiful, beautiful book that I think should be in every single classroom. It is for uh, small children, three to five, even though the text is in English and Spanish, but this is a great read, you know, with parents, uh, with teachers in the classroom. Uh, and I think, you know, all the children are going to enjoy it. The second book in the, in the, in my presentation is La Historia de Ruby Bridges and it's based on the inspirational story of Ruby Bridges. It was written by Robert Coles and illustrated by George Ford. Um, the year is 1960 and six year old Ruby Bridges and her family have recently moved from Mississippi to New Orleans in search of a better life. When a judge ordered Ruby to attend first grade at Williams Friends Elementary and all white school, Ruby must face angry mobs of parents who refuse to send their children to school with her. The book is in paperback, it's for children four to A. Uh, it's also available in ebook. And it's a very important book to have in every classroom. Um, here is an illustration from the interior of the book. Um, by the way, this, this is a, a reissue uh, edition. Uh, you can see Ruby arriving in school and you can see people that are holding signs, um, you know, protesting her attending an all white school. And I love this illustration because this is Ruby right before arriving at school and she's praying. She's praying for those. She stops in the middle of the, you know, her way to school and um, she's praying for those that are screaming at her um, so they could find peace, so they can let her go to school, so they can, you know, uh, be happy with themselves. Okay. So this is a very powerful illustration in the book, which I really, really love. Okay, the next um, title in the list is um, El Dia Terrible de Rita y Rafi. It is by the brilliant storyteller Carmen Agradiri. Um, she's also um, a Puerto Rican Pre honoree. And it is a story of these two kids, a boy and a girl that are very good friends. And every day they leave the house and they meet in the middle, uh, you know, under a tree between the two houses and they play. 
until one day that um, things do not go well and one of them start crying and they go back home. So every day after that, they leave the house and try to meet each other under the tree, but they cannot find um, a nice way to do it. They always find an obstacle. So it is a wonderful story. It is a story uh, about saying, I'm sorry. And I think it's super important. The book is, besides that, it's, you know, it's funny, um, it's repetitive, uh, great story. I mean, it's wonderful to read in class because it's really, really good. Uh, it's a paperback. It is uh, for ages three to five. It's also available in ebook. And these are all the titles that we have published by the same author, by Carmen. Uh, one we published, El Gallo Que No Se Callaba, we published maybe two, three years ago. And it is a story about the spirit of freedom. That's a story that celebrates the spirit of freedom. Um, and also a new title that's coming up soon, that is The Children's Moon, that's for September 2022. Okay, the next book in the list is uh, Maca la Alpaca. Uh, it is by Matt Cosgrove. Matt is uh, from Australia. Um, he have, his, reading, his writing is influenced uh, by his two children, uh, who are his most enthusiastic uh, critics and also him, his most enthusiastic supporters. In this adorable, quirky picture book, Maka uh, is playing in puddles, is having fun until she finds, you know, she meets a bully uh, that um, doesn't treat him well. And of course, you know, he teaches the bully um, how to act different, you know, uh, with the kindness and, and, and being very smart. Uh, the book is for ages three to five. It is in paperback. It is also available in ebook. And here is another one, uh, another title by the same author. And it is called Una Pila de Alpacas. Uh, in English, it's a stack of alpacas. And I, I give the titles in English because I think sometimes teachers like to have the English and the Spanish in the classroom, you know, for kids that speak English or for kids that speak Spanish. So just wanted to let you know that they are available in both languages. And in this title, uh, in this story, Maga is uh, babysitting his two nephews and his niece. And they are uh, real troublemakers and he's having a hard time. It is a super funny book. Uh, let me show you the uh, illustration. The colors are beautiful. And uh, Maka's uh, nephew and nieces are really real troublemakers. So the kids are going to have um, a lot of laugh reading this book. Okay, the next title is also a picture book and it is by Ross Burak. This is a companion to his first book, The Burying Patient Caterpillar. If you haven't read the first book, it is about a caterpillar who can't wait to get out of the cocoon. Well, this is now the butterfly who is migrating to Mexico and she doesn't think she will be able to make it there uh, because it's too long and you know it's too far away. The, the trip is too long and it's too far and it's, it's hard. So it is a lesson in resilience uh, really. It's, um, it, it is um, a, a lesson not only in resilience but also in uh, the way that we look at life. Um, it's extremely funny, the, the, the text uh, and the butterfly, you know, meets a whale in the middle of the trip and, um, and she asks her question, you know, ¿Cómo se supone que viaje tan lejos? ¿Volando? ¿Puedo tomar un avión? No. ¿Un globo? No. ¿Un dirigible? No. Entonces nunca lo lograré. So not only is a, a very funny book uh, with a hilarious butterfly, but it's also a lesson about, you know, uh, persistence. And it also teaches a lot of facts about butterfly migration. Okay, and here's the previous book by uh, Ross Burak, uh, The Very Impatient Caterpillar, the one that I mentioned before, and one that is coming up soon in the fall, that is Goodnight Butterfly. Okay, uh, now we are going to start with chapter books. Um, these are two chapter books in this branch series. Uh, the series is aimed to uh, reader, young readers, um, children who are starting to learn how to read. Uh, this is a series about unicorn that live in the forest. He attends unicorn school. All the unicorns that have powers, um, they're funny. They have to, they have different quests that they have to accomplished by the end of each book, their t-shirt. Let me just show you 
um, you see the classroom here and you see the teacher and every week the teacher assigned the, the unicorns a new um, homework and they have to earn a batch that of course they are going to use their powers to be able to, um, to accomplish that task. Uh, you can see the unicorns here, they are extremely cute and, um, and it's, it's, it's a book about friendship and about doing the work and, uh, and trying to do you know, what is best for everyone at the same time. It is by uh, Rebecca Elliott, the series. Uh, she's the same uh, author of uh, another series that we translate into Spanish, which is called Diario de una Lechuza, um, Our Diaries. And uh, the books are really wonderful. I'm sure kids are going to love them. Okay, now we have the middle grade novel, uh, La Tierra de las Cruyas by Aida Salazar. This is a very powerful uh, book that I recommend all teachers to have in the classroom. It is about immigration. It's about a reality that we have in this country that we are living every single day, news that we are listening um, every day. Uh, it is a story of a girl. She's only nine years old. She's here with her parents in the United States. She's from Mexico, but her fa father is deported to Mexico. And, um, a few weeks later, her mother, who's pregnant, and she are also detained, and they are detained in a detention camp. And it is a story about the families that her, she meets. In, she meets there at the detention camp. It is about how cold it is, the food that they eat, and all the problems that they have to confront in order to be able to see their families reunited again. Uh, it is a very powerful reading, and I definitely recommend it to every teacher and librarian. Uh, it's really wonderful, and it could be a great team of discussion in any classroom. Uh, the book is for ages 8 to 12. It is available in a book, uh, and it is, um, in case you have seen, you know, La Luna Dentro de Mi, that's the previous novel by Aida Salazar, which is the story of a girl that it's a coming of age story and it's also extremely powerful. So I think these two titles uh, will make a great addition for um, any classroom and for any uh, kid uh, on that age group. Okay, um, now I'm just going to go over the graphic novels. And the first that I have is uh, from the series I Survive. I Survive is a very famous series in English and in Spanish selling extremely well. and. It is a nonfiction, but uh, even though the, it is fiction, even though the characters are fictional, the events in the books are, you know, from real life, real life events. So um, uh, in this case, you know, they are, this novel specifically is about the attacks of shark attacks in 1916 in New Jersey. Uh, the illustrations are wonderful. The books are 140, um, 128 pages. Um, and it's the story of this boy that is living in New Jersey and have, you know, a leaf himself um, throughout these um, important historical events. Um, okay, we have three more, uh, two more titles. Um, one that it's um, The Sinking of the Titanic, also based on, uh, you know, the real sinking of the Titanic. And also uh, we have another one coming up soon that is The Attack of the Grizzlies, 1967. I think one of the things that I love about this book is and the back matter of the book and back of the, the book, they have a story about the real, uh, you know, events that happened with the names of the people that, you know, were there with uh, all the information about where they took place. Um, uh, and it's extremely interesting because it's a combination of something that is really going to grab the attention of a child and at the same time just teach them about real historical events. Um, we also have the series, the same series, but we have it in chapter books in the classroom, you know, for the classroom more than anything. But um, they, we have six titles that we have published so far. We publish, you know, the shark attacks, also about Hurricane Katrina about Pearl Harbor, the bombing of Pearl Harbor, the sinking of the Titanic, the San Francisco earthquake, and most recently last year, uh, the September 11 attacks. These are great books. And as I said before, the characters are fictional, but the, the events are real. They're real historical events that can teach 
um, children about these important um, things that happen in our history. Okay, next I have also a series of graphic novel. Uh, it is based on Babysitter's Club and um, it is called Babysitter Little Sister. That's the title of the series, but it's, they are based on the Anne Martin novels, Babysitter's Club. Uh, it's a fresh and fun graphic novel series, a spin off of the Babysitter's Club featuring Christie's Little Sister. Uh, we have four titles uh, La Bruja de Karen, Los Patines de Karen, El Peor Día de Karen, y El Club de los Gatitos de Karen. Karen is a hilarious kid. Um, she's independent, she's funny, um, she uh, has an amazing imagination, and the kids are really going to have a great time, you know, reading these books. Okay. Uh, now we have um, a graphic novel by um, Dal Pilkey. Uh, the characters are the same as in the series Darkman. We have published 10 titles, Darkman titles in Spanish. And this is, uh, this is story, uh, it's Cat Kid. He's teaching 21 baby frogs, the art of making comics. Um, the story is full of um, jokes as everything that Dal Pilkey writes. And readers are going to inspire about, you know, the stories um, that the froggies, um, write the comic books that they create in order to be able to make their own comics. The book is uh, hardcover, uh, it's for um, ages a seven and up. It is also available in a book. We have a second book just coming out soon uh, and, and everyone is going to and really enjoy um, this, this book. Parents, teachers, grandparents, everyone in the house, you know, because as ever seen, Dal Pilkey, you know, he's just simply hilarious and, and wonderful. Okay, now I have um, another graphic novel that is coming up in May, 2022. Uh, this book is coming simultaneously in English and Spanish. I'm super excited for this story. And it's a story of this girl that lives in New York. Her family is from Honduras. And um, she goes, uh, during the summer, she goes on vacation to Honduras to visit her family. And, uh, and when she gets there, she finds out that her mother is planning to celebrate a quinceañera. Of course, she didn't want to go with her family to Honduras. She wanted to stay in New York. She wanted to be with her friends in summer camp. But um, she ended up going to, to, you know, to see her family. And then, of course, you know, she has to celebrate her quinceañera. She doesn't know how to dance. She doesn't know how to walk in heels. And it's just a hilarious story. Um, I have one more title coming up. Um, therefore, as a matter of fact, it's just a serious and nonfiction series. They are coming out in May 2022. And each of these nonfiction series um, book, they contrast two ferocious animals. What would happen if, uh, you know, if a lion would meet a tiger, you know, but the books are full of facts. Um, kids have a wonderful time reading them. Uh, it's simply a wonderful uh, way for them to learn about these animals. All these books are going to be available in ebook. And at the end of the PowerPoint presentation, this is information, you know, how can you access our catalog? Um, and how can you order books from Scholastic? And if you have any questions, that everything is in the PowerPoint presentation that is going to be shared with you in the Reforma website. But thank you so much. That's um, my presentation for today. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Thank you so much, Maria. Before you go, we do have two yes. questions. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Laura Duncan wanted to ask if the Scholastic books will be available in hardcover. Most of them are in uh, are only in paperback, unfortunately. Um, I know that some um, um some for librarians specifically. I'm sorry, um, but only the Cat Kids series by Delph Pilkey are is um, are in hardcover. As a matter of fact, um, only that one. Yes. Yeah. And so, yeah. second question from Janet Peterson, are the SobreVV graphics available now? Well, the graphics, only one is available right now. There's another one coming right away. I can um, just check right here. Uh, but it's in the next few months, I think in the summer, maybe July, August, and the other one is September. So there is um, three that are going to be available um, before the end of the year. Excellent. Thank you so much, okay, Maria. Great. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Have a good afternoon. Bye, Maria. Uh, our third presenter is Sawako Shirota from Candlewick Press. 
Candlewick Press is a corporate member of Reforma. For more information about this company and contact information, please visit reformala.org backslash blog backslash book fair, uh, also in the chat. And remember to use our hashtag reformala book fair. Feel free to add your questions to the comment box during the presentation and they will be answered at the end. Welcome, Sawako. Thank you so much. It's so nice to be here. Thank you all um, for uh, letting me talk to you guys about our exciting new titles. Um, yeah, I'm Sawako Shoda. I'm the manager of library marketing at Candlewick Press. And I'm so happy to share with you some of these titles that are for Spanish speaking and bilingual readers. Um, I think that I sent through an order sheet with all the ISBNs and title information that I'll be introducing on this slideshow. And I'll also be um, sharing the presentation. Um, so that should be, uh, become available uh, very soon. All right, so before diving in, in the next slide, I have a few things I wanted to let you know as housekeeping details. First, we have a very robust um, social media. Uh, uh, hello, sorry. Um, could you move to the next slide? Is it possible? Or Oh, thank you. Um, so just so that um, you can uh, see all of our social media accounts here, feel free to follow along. We share, we're very active on social media. We share information about author events and conference presence and new and free resources. So please do share with us, uh, follow along uh, as we share information on those channels. And then the next slide, um, you could, also see that we have a dedicated Instagram account, Candlewick on Espanol now, um, that we share uh, resources very similar to all the other ones, except that you know we really try to focus on the Spanish and bilingual titles here. And then in the next slide, you'll see we also have a dedicated Pinterest board uh, on our Candlewick classroom that shows you a collection of Spanish and Spanish English bilingual titles. So definitely go there if you're a big, uh, if you like using Pinterest, I do. Um, and if you're familiar with Flipgrid, in the next slide, you can use this QR code here. You can scan it to go to our discovery library uh, and uh, check out these great author videos and uh, other resources on uh, Spanish language topics. And then in the next slide, yeah, you'll see that we have also some e-newsletters that you can um, sign up, subscribe to. The Candlewick CERT, the top one is our library marketing specific uh, uh, e-newsletter. So um, definitely subscribe to that. We again share all new author events information and uh, when we'll be at conferences and what kind of activities we're doing there. So definitely uh, subscribe and we do giveaways as well. And then lastly, um, you can scan this QR code here and you can access uh, uh, all of our Spanish titles uh, on the Edelweiss catalog here. Okay, let's get started. So we'll start with the spring 22 titles. First, we have the Spanish edition of Sometimes All I Need Is Me by Juliana Perdomo. Uh, I don't know if I can pronounce this correctly as I'm not sadly a Spanish speaker, but uh, I think if, if you say a veces, yo soy todo lo que necesito. I hope I did that right. Um, meet a young girl who loves her cozy home. It smells like cinnamon tea and feels like warm pajamas. But even when she's away from home and everything is different, she finds a way to become her own home where she feels calm. At night when it's too dark and her feet are cold, her room can be a little scary, but she creates her own light when she closes her eyes and thinks of the sun. With friendliness and charm, Juliana Perdomo, in her debut as author illustrator, shows young readers how to find comfort and confidence within her. Her heartwarming picture book reassures children that uh, sometimes everything we need is already inside us. You can see the interior in the next slide. Um, as you know, the conversation resiliency, uh, oh, hello, sorry, can you still hear me? Like, I'm just trying to make sure my internet's still connected. But um, yeah, in the next slide, okay, great, thank you, Patty. In the next slide, um, if you could go, you'll see that there is an interior that I included in the presentation that as you can see, it's just such a great um, friendly, uh, kid friendly um, and bright color, like just so fun to look at. Um, the conversation around resiliency, mindfulness and emotional and mental self care is evolving and this book speaks directly to that topic. And the eye catching graphic uh, appeals uh, to crossover audience as well. 
Juliana Perdomo is a fresh uh, new voice in children's books. She's the illustrator of El Cucuy is Scared uh, 2 by Donna Barbara Higuera and What is Baby Going to Do by Laura Knowles, among other books. She lives with her son in Bogota, Colombia. Yeah, and then the next we have the Spanish edition of Tuesa Night Before Pride by debut author Joanna McClintock and illustrated by Juana Medina, who's the author and illustrator of Juana Lucas, which won the 2017 Rebel Prey Author Award. If you're looking for a tale that encapsulates the glittering joy and celebratory spirit behind the Pride Parade, and Pride Month, you will find it here. This book offers an incredible opportunity for young readers to become better acquainted with the important uh, history of the fight for inclusivity and LGBTQ rights, featuring the beauty of families of every composition. The text is in rhyme modeled on Twas the Night Before uh, Christmas, hence the title. It follows a young family with a single sex parents uh, getting ready for the big pride parade. And along the way, you get an introduction to how the celebration all came to be. And if you go to the next slide, um, fun fact, <laughs> if you look really closely to this final spread here, you'll also be able to find uh, Juana and Lucas, uh, Juana Medina's, um, her, uh, her wife and her kids and her grandparents, their grandparents represented, and Juana and Lucas uh, might be in there as well, and even a few picture book artists, including Tommy DePaula, as an ode to those who came before uh, the kid in the kid lit world. So I think that's just so cute, um, so great. Uh, we have seen a surge of popularity of LGBTQ inclusive titles in the YA sphere in the last few years, especially in the graphic novels arena, but there's still such a gap in the market for young readers of picture books covering this important topic. So we're just really excited to be able to offer this book, especially now. It's for ages six to nine, coming out in May this year, simultaneously with the English version, right on time for Pride Month. And then next we have the Spanish edition of Lupe Lopez Rockstar Rules by E.E. E. Charlton Trujillo and Pat Zitlo Miller, illustrated by Josepita. It's about a sassy drummer who must learn to play by the rules. When Lupe Lopez stressed through the door of Hector P. Garcia Elementary in sunglasses with two taped up number two pencils, drumsticks of course, poking from her pocket, her confidence is off the charts all day, Lupe uh, drums on desks, tables, and chairs while Miss Quintanilla reminds her of school rules. Lupe has her own rules though. Don't listen to anyone. One, two, make lots of noise. And three, have fun, have, have fans, not friends. And if you go to the next slide, um, you'll see the interior in there. Um, with her new teacher less than starstruck uh, and fans hard to come by, Lupe wonders if having friends is such, is not, such a bad idea after all. Can it be that true star power means nothing, knowing when to share the spotlight? This book truly delivers a useful message to the would-be famous that friends are better than fans. The setting is an elementary school in South Texas and a largely Mexican-American school community. Uh, Spanish words are integrated into the text and artwork throughout for both English and Spanish editions. And this is coming out in June for ages three to seven. And then next, I wanted to also note a few titles from brilliant newcomers in the kidlit scene. First, we have the Spanish version of Leila, the Perfect Witch, which is a sweet and spunky monster-filled picture book from Flavia Z. Drago, the creator of Gustavo the Shy Ghost which was number one on the New York Times bestseller list and continues to gain popularity, especially during the Halloween season. This new title from her is perfect not only for Halloween fans, but also for emerging bakers. And in the next slide, you'll see a really fun interior. Layla Wayward is a little witch who excels at everything she does. She's the fastest flyer, the most cunning conjurer, and the most superb shapeshifter. And now she dreams of winning the Magnificent Witch Cake Off. As the youngest in a long line of masters of the dark arts of Pizzeri, Layla wants her entry to be perfect. But even with the most bewitching of recipes, she realizes a terrible truth. She's a disaster in the kitchen. Luckily, Layla has three magical sisters who are happy to share their culinary secrets with her. What's more, Layla discovers that baking with them is fun. Win or lose, she already tasted the sweetest thing of all, acceptance, with a pinch of nightshade and a bit of mandrake. 
So it's a story about perfectionism and sisterhood hitting home for many children who are constantly striving to be the best and perfect. It will help them see that the experience of creating something can sometimes be more fun and more satisfying than the outcome itself. Okay, next we have the Spanish version of Something About Grandma by Tanya Durahill, author and illustrator of A New Home, which is also available in both Spanish and, edition, uh, and English editions. This is a sweet story about the magic of grandmothers and, pas uh, and passing down traditions inspired by Tanya's own visits to her grandmother's home. At grandma's house where Julia is staying with her parents for the first time, the breeze is sweet like jasmine. Mornings begin with sugar bread and the most magnificent hot chocolate cures all homesickness. There is something about this place and about grandma, like how she can tell when Julia has been quietly picking limes from the garden or that she can see the future and knows when Julia is about to fall off her bike or how she can journey back in time through the stories she tells. In the room where Julia's mother grew up, her grandmother holds her in a warm embrace, an embrace that Julia will pass on to her family when her parents arrive with her new baby brother. Uh, in the next slide, you'll see a really nice interior uh, with Tanya Durr Hill's heartwell, heartfelt illustrations, incorporating poems by her great grandfather that were handwritten by her grandmother. Something About Grandma offers a tender and playful exploration of the magic of intergenerational love and wisdom. This will come out in August this year for ages four to eight. Now we're moving on to just a few exciting new fall 22 titles we'd like you to look out for. Um, we have the Spanish edition of Jabari Tries by Gaya Cornwall, which will now be available in Spanish uh, this fall. In this follow-up to the popular Jabari Jumps, uh, Jabari is inventing a machine that will fly all the way across the yard, but making it go from crash to whoosh will take grit, patience, and maybe even a little help from his sister. Filled with problem solving and patience, a great example of how to work through challenges with a hint of STEM focus. A gentle introduction of how to ask for help from others and accept it in return. The new translated version will be coming out in September this year for ages four to eight. And then next, we have the very popular ALA Caldecott award-winning picture book, Alma and How She Got Her Name by Juana Martinez Neal, now available in paperback Spanish edition. This book illuminates the universal trial ritual of listening to one's birth story or the story of one's name, delightfully enhanced by the cultural specificity of young Alma's situation, and that she has many names, each honoring a member of her extended family. This paperback edition will be available in September. And next, in the middle, middle grade world, we have Undercover Latina by Aya de Leon. The author is a former slam poetry champion and a seasoned author of contemporary crime fiction. Um, and she also directs Poetry for the People, which is an arts and activism program at UC Berkeley, where she also teaches creative writing uh, and regularly blogs about social justice uh, politics. In her exciting debut for young readers, Leon pits a Latina teen spy against the ominous working of a white nationalist. 14-year-old Andrea hails from a family of spies working for the factory, quote unquote, an international organized dedicate, dedic organization dedicated to protecting the people of color. But her first solo mission, Andrea, goes undercover as Andrea Burke, a white girl, to befriend the strange son of a dangerous white supremacist. In addition to her factory training, this assignment calls for a deep dive into the son's interests, uh, all while taking care not to speak Spanish and blow her family's cover. But it's hard to hide who you really are, especially when you develop a crush on your target's Latino best friend. Smart, entertaining, and politically astute, this is a fast-paced upper middle grade fair from an established author of uh, commercial heist and espionage novels for adults. And then next slide, and this is actually my last uh, title, new title is, and last but certainly not least, we have Mercy Suarez Plays It Cool, which is the finale of the beloved Mercy Suarez trilogy, first of which was the Newbery award-winning medal in 2019, Mercy Suarez Changes Gears. And we are so excited uh, about this. Oh, for Mercy Suarez, uh, the second book, we are coming out with the Spanish uh, edition. I wanted to just note that here before I move on to talk about this 
third book. Um, but yeah, we're just so excited about this final book, um, but also bittersweet to arrive at the finale. Um, in this third and final installment, you'll see that it's a year filled with more responsibilities uh, and independence for Mercy, but also with opportunities to reinvent herself. And that means a new haircut, nighttime football games, and an overnight field trip. Mercy has always been fine with not being one of the popular kids like Avery Sanders. But when Avery starts talking to Mercy more unexpectedly, Mercy wants to play it cool. With Edna Santos always in her business, though, it's only a matter of time before Mercy has to decide where her loyalty lies. Uh, and at home, as she sees Lolo's Alzheimer worsen, she must learn how to turn to loved ones in times of loss and grief. Whether Mercy is facing school drama or change, changing family dynamics, readers will empathize as she discovers who she can count on and what can change, what can change in an instant. So yeah, with this year also being the 100th anniversary year of the Newbury, we're really just excited to be able to offer the satisfying finale to the Suarez family saga. We just can't wait to hear what you guys think. Um, and then in the next slide, you'll just get information about the second book, um, we're actually revamping the cover um, of the Mercy Suarez trilogy. So you're gonna get a brand new cover for the Mercy Suarez um, second book and the first book. We're just kind of working on that right now. So we haven't released the cover yet, but that is coming. And we're just really excited that we can offer the Spanish book edition um, for the second book. The first book is already um, available in Spanish edition as well. And I see a question here, is Undercover Latina available in Spanish? Um, that, we, it is not available yet, I believe, um, but we, I will take back notes um, if there are any interests. You know, that's always something that I want to bring back to the editorial team to discuss further. So I'm glad to hear that there's some people who are interested. Thank you. Are there, are there any questions I can answer from you guys? Okay, great. Thank you so much. Bye guys. Thank you so much, Sawako. Um, our next presenter is Miriam Tuliao from Penguin Random House Library Marketing. Uh, for more information about this company and contact information, please visit Reforma LA backslash blog backslash book fair. And remember to use the hashtag Reforma LA book fair. Uh, feel free to add your questions to the chat during the presentation and we'll answer everything at the end. Welcome Miriam and we're excited to have you here. Thank you so much, Sheridan. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for inviting us. I'm Miriam uh, from Penguin Random House's library marketing team, and it's an absolute pleasure and privilege to be here today and share some uh, notable, new, and forthcoming Spanish language titles for children and teens. Oh, I'm hoping to move this. Let's see. Okay, great. Um, before we get started, I wanted to invite everyone to join Library Journal, School Library Journal, and our team in the upcoming Spring 2022 Book and Author Festival that's happening on April 7th. Um, it's a day-long a virtual celebration of books, reading, and libraries. And we have an exciting series of author programs planned, including one featuring Ruth Behar, Erica Sanchez, and Sandra Cisneros in conversation with Reforma Northeast President Elisa Garcia. So we hope to see you there. And now on to the books. Here are two. Spanish bilingual editions in the popular storytelling math series. Our first book, Mira Abuela, Look Grandma, Ni Elise, introduces the spatial concepts of volume, capacity, and area in a tale about a Cherokee boy named O, who's determined to show off his traditional marbles at the Cherokee national holiday. Art Colson, a citizen of the Cherokee Nation, has created a culturally authentic story that can serve as either a window or mirror for young readers, and Madeline Goodnight's delightful illustrations reflect her love of childhood. Our next fun math-inspired story is Usha y la Gran Excavadora, Usha and the Big Digger. 
When three girls look up at the stars, they see different things. Arte sees the Big Dip. Her sister Usha sees the Big Digger and their cousin Gloria sees the Big Kite. Could they all be right? Amitha Jagannath Knight's debut book features two South Asian sisters and their biracial cousin. Each character looks at the Big Dipper from a different orientation, and as they switch positions to see what the others see, they build an understanding of rotations, perspectives, and orientations. Kirkus has high praise for this book, noting that it bursts with charming images of endearing kids, and the story's presentation of the girls' varying, equally valid perspectives is a valuable tool for promoting empathy. Jacqueline Woodson and Leo Espinosa, the multi-award winning author and illustrator team, gloriously capture the joys of summer in El Mundo Era Nuestro. In Brooklyn in the summer not so long ago, grown-ups always had some place to be or some kind of work to do, but the minute school ended, us kids were as free as air free as sun and free as summer. This is a truly delightful read. And the great news is that both the Spanish and English versions of this title will be published in May. Also simultaneously releasing this summer in Spanish and English are retazos or patchwork. In Profound, reflective verse and sumptuous artwork, Newbery Award winner Matt de la Pena and best-selling illustrator Corinna Loiken explore the endless possibilities each child contains. A basketball player might become a poet, a young dancer may grow into a computer coder, a class clown may be may one day serve as an inspiring teacher, and today's quiet empath might be tomorrow's great leader. The empowering message here is that your story is still being written. Mi Ciudad Canta by Cynthia Harmony and Teresa Martinez. After experiencing a devastating earthquake, the spirit of a vibrant Mexican neighborhood is shaken, but not broken. Here is the story of a little girl and her dog who are embarking on their daily walk, skipping and spinning to the familiar sounds of revving cars, clanking bikes, friendly dog barks, and the whistling camote carts. But what they aren't expecting to hear is the terrifying sound of a rumbling earthquake, and then silence. This is a lyrical picture book that has a message of hope in the face of tragedy. It is also a love letter to the beauty and the spirit of Mexico City. La Casita de Esperanza by Terry Catasus Jennings. When Esperanza and her family arrive in the United States from Cuba, they buy a little house, una casita. And as Esperanza and her family settle into their new house, they all do their part to make it a home, working multiple jobs and doing chores to pitch in. When mommy's sister, Conchita, comes to stay with them, she helps other families by taking care of their children during the day. Together, they turn the house into a place where other new immigrants can help one another and feel accepted. The author, Terry Catusas Jennings, first came to, from Cuba to the United States in 1961 when she was 12 years old. And in this book, she tells an inspiring semi-autobiographical story of how immigrants can help each other find their footing in a new country. The English edition, The Little House of Hope, will be released simultaneously. El Libro de las Arenas Movidizas is the translation of the updated classroom staple, Tommy DePaolo's 
de Paula's uh, The Quicksand Book, which garnered starred reviews um, from School Library Journal and Booklist. This is perfect uh, to recommend for kids interested in science and the natural world. And here, the iconic award-winning children's author illustrator combines comedy with science facts to teach kids about the nature of quicksand with a smile. Un Gol Mas is uh, a new addition to the Me Gusta Leer, Leer series, which aims to provide emerging Spanish language readers with translations of the popular I Like to Read books. This is a story about an act of kindness that takes place on the soccer field. Some kids won't let May play, but one boy invites her to join his team. And when he has a chance to score a winning goal, he gives up his chance and passes the ball to May. Now May can experience the joy of victory. Me Encantan Los Insectos uh, is another new book in the Me Gusta Leer series. The girl in this story loves insects, how they look, how they sound, and how they move. Her friend, however, doesn't, um, especially when they sting. And like them or not, uh, children here will learn many interesting facts about insects, including how essential they are for human survival. Mi Buena Mala Suerte is the translation of Lucky Broken Girl. This is Ruth Behar's debut novel and winner of the 2018 Pura Belpre Award. Meet Ruthie Mizrahi, a rising sixth grader who moves with her family from Cuba to 1960s New York in search of the American dream. Ruthie makes friends with a boy from India and a girl from Belgium. She's proud to be Miss Hopscotch Queen of Queens and to know both English and Spanish so she can translate for her mother at the grocery store. Ruthie's future seems bright, but when a car accident leaves her in a body cast and confines her to her bed, her world shrinks. Sad and afraid, she's consumed by anger toward the boy who caused the accident. How will she heal both physically and spiritually? Mi Buena Mala Suerte, based on Behar's own life experiences, takes readers on a heart-opening journey that is filled with teachable moments. El Numero Uno is book 16 of Jeff Kenney's uh, popular Diary of a Wimpy Kid series, and it just released this spring. As Greg Hefley and his teammates start the new basketball season, their chances of winning even a single game look very slim. But in sports, anything can happen. And when everything is on the line and the ball is in Greg's hands, will he rise to the occasion or will he blow his big shot? Next, we have two nonfiction summer releases, Stamped Para Niños. This is the chapter book edition of Stamped, Racism, Anti-Racism, and You, the groundbreaking number one bestseller by luminaries Dr. Imbram X. Kendi and Jason Reynolds. This is an essential introduction to the history of racism and anti-racism in America. And in an increíble uh, pero cierto, Cuerpo Humano. This is um, a book that takes readers on a complete tour of the human body, showcasing its many parts, uh, organs, tissues, and systems in rich visual detail. It's filled with fascinating facts and figures, and it's a must-have for a uh, must-have title for school and public libraries. Now we have a small selection of summer releases for teens. Sueñan con ser como nosotras is a translation of Jessica Goodman's best-selling novel, They Wish They Were Us. This is Gossip Girl Meets One of Us is Lying. 
It's a taut murder mystery that is set against the backdrop of an exclusive prep school on Long Island's Gold Coast. Uh, we expect um, there to be uh, much teen interest in this book because HBO is adapting uh, Goodman's title um, and turning it into a TV miniseries uh, called The Player's Table. Uh, we have now Aprender a Volar by Alberto Garcia Salido. This is a moving novel about two friends, one who knows that every minute counts while the other one is about to find out. Uh, Luis is 16 years old and his life is turned upside down when he's diagnosed with cancer. For Diego, an oncology resident, life changes the moment he meets Luis and, Luis and agrees to help him fulfill one last wish to flee the hospital, travel to Tarifa, and say goodbye to the girl he fell in love with last summer. And my for my final book, I have Man Manual para la Vida Z, and this is by Ocean Vicky, the, the Gen Z influencer, and it's a humorous nonfiction title for teens with information about healthy living and covering various topics related um, to various social topics related to self-esteem and self-reliance. Um, that's it for me. Um, a big, big thank you to Anna, Anna, Celia, Sheridan, Edwin, and Reforma LA for bringing us together today. And thank you all. Thank you so much, Miriam. Uh, our next presenter is Kia Trejo from Latin American Booksource. For more information about this company and contact information, please visit reformala.org backslash blog backslash book fair, also in the chat. And remember to use our hashtag if you're posting on social media, uh, hashtag Reforma LA Book Fair. Welcome, Kia. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Um, are you seeing my screen? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I'm Kia from Latin American Bookstores, and today I'm going to present you our new releases for children and young adult books. And we will start with nonfiction books. First, we have A Pequeños y Grandes, Little People, Big Dreams, uh, the best selling biography series by, uh, for kids by the Spanish author Maria Isabel Sanchez Vergara. And here we have the four latest releases in Spanish. First, we have um, Rosalind Franklin, the scientist who has crucial to the discovery of the double helix in DNA. Then we have Steve Jobs, the visionary whose ideas still shape the world. Then we have Pablo Picasso, one of the world's greatest artists in the 20th century. And we have also Tina Bausch, and a cool figure on the international dance scene. Also in biographies, we have Mexicanos, Corazón de Mexicanos Como Yo. And this is the second volume of the series Corazón de Mexicanos and pays tribute to Mexicans who by necessity or choice have developed professionally in the United States. The stories of these people have made them symbols of pride, not only for Mexico, but also for the United States. And here we will learn about 50 stories of these characters, their lives, their challenge and achievements. Also, we have Mis Pies Tienen Raíz, Mujeres del Mundo de Habla Hispana. And in this book, uh, narrates the adventures of 21 women and groups of women each live in double marks, whether it's Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz or Maria Elena Walsh or Elena Garro. These are not old fashioned biographies. There are threads that unite the stories of all of them and that today makes us part of the plot. And also we have Chicas Geniales que fueron como tú. And this wonderful illustrated book tells the stories of 20 great girls, including scientists, 
singers, writers, athletes from all times and places in the world, such as Frida Kahlo, Malala Yustafai, Greta Thunberg, Yalitza Parizio, Rosario Castellanos, among others. Also, we have this book, Mi Primer Librito de Yoga, Me Siento Bien, and it's a book to introduce children to yoga. And with 11 postures and relaxation exercise, young readers will have the opportunity to improve their motor skills and exercise their body while having fun. And you can see a snack peek of the inside of the book. Also, we have Donde Vivo Yo by Margarita del Mazo. In this illustrated board book, the little ones will discover the habitat of cute characters such as a penguin, a bear, a zebra, camels, spiders, etc., with a musical rhymes and colorful illustrations. Also, we have Todos Contamos, and this film book will get you counting from zero to 7.5 billion, but also to do so much more. You can follow the character stories through the book and see how their lives collide with those of these others. Todos Contamos is critically acclaimed for its unique approach to visual communication and has been awarded some of the world's highest honor for children's books. Then we have these two titles, Economia para Principiantes y Política para Principiantes with bright, Infographics pictures, this informative book describes in a simple way and with a touch of humor, complex, complex concepts such as markets, trades, prices, competition, taxes, and sustainable economy. And in Politica para Principiantes, also is an informative guide to political systems, elections, voting, and government, and issues including feminism, human rights, freedom of speech, and fake news, I'll explain it with clear text and bright info, infographic style illustration. And here is a snack bit of the book, Economía para Principiantes. And this is a snack bit of Politica Princip para Principiantes. As you can see, it's very colorful and explains all in such fun way. Next for fiction, we have this picture book, Gigante. In this beautiful picture book by, by Mexican author, Alexandra Castellanos, tells the story of Chris and her giant friend. He is giant, but this doesn't prevent them to play. The problem is that he gets bigger and bigger and he will have to transform into, some, into something else soon. This book is uh, El Album Ganador del Concurso de Album Ilustrado de Orilla del Viento by Fondo de Cultura Económica. Also, we have Nuestra Niña, a brand new picture book from our winning and best love creator, Anthony Brown. Nuestra Niña is a joyful and empowering celebration of daughters, granddaughters, sisters, and grandchildren everywhere, showing all the many things that girls can be. And this book is part of the series uh, Family by Anthony Brown. We also have the titles Mi Papá, Mi Mamá, y Mi Hermano. Next, we have A Luna Le Encanta el Museo, created by award-winning poet Joseph Coelho. This book follows Luna and her classmate at the art gallery, and young readers will love this introduction to art by Van Gogh, Damien Hirst, Andy Warhol, and many more. Also, we have in picture books, El Destino de Fausto. This is a great fable for modern times from our beloved New York Times bestseller, Oliver Jeffers. And this book tells the story of Fausto, a man who believed he owned everything. He convinced the flowers, the forest, the mountains that they belong to him, but still they were not enough for Fausto. So one day he embarks to proclaim that he owns the sea. And this wonderful picture book is darker than other Oliver Jeffrey titles. So I recommend it for older children and adults as well. Also, we have these three books, 
First, we have Tu y Yo by Norma Muñoz Ledon. And in this interesting book, Mexican writer Norma Muñoz gives the earth a voice. The author collects real questions and concerns from children at the same time, at the same time that they express their curiosity to know the secrets, the origin and destiny of our planet and the earth answers them with honesty, with, but also with hope. Next, we have Muerto de Miel. And this is a collection of horror stories by acclaimed author, Anthony Horowitz. And then we have Suerte, Escape del Holocausto. In Uri Shulevitz offers a deeply honest memoir recounting his childhood during the time of the Holocaust. Details eight difficult years of survival and how he and his Jewish family lived as a refugees and how they escaped the terrors of the Nazis. So I think this is a book that everyone we should read. Also we have Como Una Chispa and by L. McNichol and tells the story of Abby, an 11 year old autistic girl who fights for a monument to be erected in memory of women convinc convicted of witchcraft centuries ago in her hometown. Like her, these witches were discriminated against for not being like the majority. And Addie will seek for society to see these differences from another perspective. This is a story about friendship, courage, and self-confidence. Also, we have Lo que no se comprenden, cuentos ilustrados. In this book, young adult readers will be, be able to delve into the work of Inés Arredondo and discover the look of one of the most important authors of Mexican literature. For young adults, also we have Elises Feminista, uh, which is a translation for Not Here to Be Like by Michelle Quach. And this is the story of Eliza, a Vietnamese Chinese American teen who loses the elections for editor in chief to Lin, an experienced male newcomer. When Eliza's frustration spills out in a viral essay, essay against him and the historic shortage of female leaders at her school, she finds herself inspiring a feminist movement she never meant to start. But when she begins to fall in love with Lynn, Eliza realizes that standing up for what she believes isn't more complicated than she thought. Also, we have Ventanas. Ventanas is a dystopian book extrapolated to any country and time where the tyranny of talk prevails and is based on a family anecdote by the author Paloma Gonzalez where children plays a helpless role in conflicts and political repression, being invisible victims. Also, we have La Importancia de Llamarse Sweetie, which the original title is There's Something About Sweetie. And it's a book that features romance, but also talks about body image issues, particularly as they relate to the American Indian culture. Also, mother and daughter relationships, overcoming difficult breakups, and, find, and finding ways to love yourself despite what other things. And last but not least, we have these books by Alice Kellen, the Spanish literary phenomenon. And she's a renowned author in the romance genre. And here we have four books that we are sure will captivate young adults with their stories and characters. The author is recognized for writing very realistic stories and for the things she addresses in her books. We have Otra Vez Tú, Tal Vez Tú, Nosotros en la Luna, y Tú y Yo Invisibles. And that's it for, for, for us. So thank you for having us, Reforma, and for organizing this. So if you have any questions, there's my email, so you're free to contact me. Thank you so much, Kia, for that wonderful presentation. Um, our next presenter is Lisette Lopez from Vista Higher Learning. 
Vista Higher Learning is a corporate member of Reforma. And for more information about this company, as well as contact information for Vista Higher Learning, please visit reformala.org backslash blog backslash book fair. And if you're using social media, remember to use our hashtag, hashtag Reforma LA Book Fair. Uh, welcome, Lisette. Hello. Um, well, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I want to tell you that I'm a little bit uh, nervous because this is going to be my first time presenting on Reforma. And um, well, first of all, I want to point out that I'm going to be dividing, splitting this presentation into two. The first part is going to be our translated titles, and the second part is going to be our original Spanish uh, titles. Uh, it's everybody looking at my screen? I'm not really sure. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, first of all, this is the Exploremos Nuestra Comunidad um, series. It's a series that you are probably familiar with by looking at the covers because it was um, originally published by Kids Can and it introduces younger readers to essential parts of the community, including people, important places, buildings, and more. This series aligns perfectly to the next generation social studies standards, making it a fabulous tool to introduce these concepts uh, in the classroom. The readers uh, will follow five friends as they explore their neighborhood and learn about everything from architecture to farm fresh foods, to mapping concepts. You can see here one of the spreads. Um, everything is uh, done with a mix of narration, facts, and cartoon style uh, illustrations that are very appealing to the young readers. In addition, each book includes a fun, hands-on activity at the end and an index. Next, uh, we have uh, Franny. Franny Kainstein, which uh, as all of you probably know, <laughs> it is a series by um, best-selling uh, New York best New York Times best-selling author Jim Benton, who does not need an introduction. And Franny, what can I say? I'm a big fan. I definitely recommend all of the books because the main character uh has a special thing she is a girl who happens to be a math scientist or a math scientist that happens to be a girl and she gets in all kinds of trouble with her behavior and crazy experiments that will make both boys and girls laugh sometimes uncontrollably and at the same time provide valuable moral lessons at the end this is uh in this slide you can see one of the chapters oh one of the pages Next, the following doesn't need an introduction. Yes, it is the Caldecott Medal for 2021. Suffice it to say, we are very proud of having this in our catalog, not only because of the beauty of its vibrant illustrations, as well as uh, just, but also because of the importance of the topic. The ind indigenous led movements across no North America to safeguard Earth's water, the first medicine. This title would make the perfect book to jumpstart an engaging exchange about preservation of Earth's resources. Here are some uh, slides with uh, beautiful illustrations. It is a jewel. Next, another favorite of mine, um, and I think uh, you might relate to what I'm going to say. Even though I am terrified of uh, sharks, I always find myself wanting to learn everything about them. This biographical title celebrates the life of marine biologist and deep sea diver, uh, Eugene Clark, whose scientific research and advocacy for the preservation of sharks made the world, the world think differently about these often misunderstood predators. This book has a back matter with a timeline of her life and interesting facts about sharks. Next, um, here we have, um, if you are into preservation of our earth and oceans, 
if, if, if that is something that you're, you're into, you've probably heard about the Worldwide Two Minute Beach Clean Campaign, a movement created by environmental champion and author Martin Doré. This book, the, in this book, the claim that small actions add up to achieve, achieve great results was taken literally by the author who provides a number of short missions we can all do to fight against irresponsible use of plastic in our everyday life. Next, um, we have uh, another super book. We have a the pleasure to translate and it's in no need of introduction. The Grand Canyon by Monster Illustration, Jason Chin. Uh, this book in itself represents an immense treasure because it is accurate, because of with its accurate signs and illustrations, the imaginary hike of a dad and her daughter through all of the Grand Canyon's ecological communities, guide readers as they immerse themselves in the present and past of this monumental natural wonder. This title is also very valuable because we all know, uh, we know that, um, we don't have many uh, good nonfiction books in Spanish about geographical accidents in the United States. Here are some of the illustrations. Um, it is something that uh, I don't know uh, if if I were a teacher, I would love to have in my classroom library. Um, next, for sure, the jewel of the crown. The Abominable of Abominable, the, it's a title that we acquired the rights to publish in Spanish and launched, and launched last summer, right on time for the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa Race Massacre, the truly unspeakable, realmente abominable event that is the subject of, the, of this book. So you can imagine that the news about the ALA awards were absolutely mind blowing since receiving this for high caliber recognitions is an, is an outstanding achievement for children and young, self, and young adult books. Um, books. And uh, of course, in his arm list, for all the lights and everybody else's. Here, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I always forget to go through the slides. Um, Sorry about that. Next, we are going to start the um, original Spanish titles. The first one to the left, Las Cortinas Rojas. It's another favorite in this book. Anita's family has no choice but to move out of their nice apartment. The new place is smaller and located in an area that they don't like. So her mother puts up some pretty red curtains to avoid the view. But whenever she prepares food, neighborhood kids attracted by the nice smells gather by their front door. This is a book that will teach young readers about solidarity, empathy, and caring about others. Next, El Almohadón de Plumas. It's a classic by the hand of Uruguayan writer Horacio Quiroga often referred to as El Perfecto Cuentista, the perfect storyteller, and also as the Edgar Allan Poe of Spanish literature. El Amón de Plumas is indeed a horror story, and in this edition, a horror story made into a picture book. Imagine such delight. Uh, next, I wanna say that we love Love, love having these three poetry, uh, poetry titles in our catalog. The first one to the left, Festival de Calaveras, is about everything that goes on during Day of, of the Dead celebrations. A gift of Mexican heritage with humorous tone celebrates life and family. And it's so on by awarded um, uh, author and illustrator, Luis, Mexican illustrator, Luis San Vicente. To to the right, I just had the wrong thing here. To the right, um, we have Tilingo Tilingo. Uh, this delightful book of verses, songs, riddles, and funny tongue twisters that abound in the oral Spanish tradition was compiled by, say, by Sergio Andricaín, one of the founders of Fundación Cuatro Gatos, Cuatro Gatos, I'm sorry, 
an organization that works to preserve, share, and disseminate the Hispanic, the Hispanic, Hispanic American cultural her heritage in the United States. In the center, we have Poemas de Ciencia para Cabras y Libélulas, and I'm not going to talk much about it since we have the pleasure of having the author Andres Piandreu presented today. This fantastic book full of humor and playful illustrations introduces the science concepts to which elementary students are exposed in the classroom. A valuable tool that would delight parents, teachers, and of course, children. And last for not, but not least, we are also very proud, very proud to present these three titles by renowned Mexican-American award-winning author and illustrator, Duncan Tonatiu. Uh, you might be familiar also with the covers because these books have been first published in English, but we, don't, we do not consider these titles as translations since it was the very own Duncan who provided the Spanish text for our edition. Uh, we have Diego Rivera, Mundo y el Nuestro, in which Duncan draws inspiration from Rivera to create his own original work to help young readers understand the importance of Diego Rivera's artwork and to realize that they too can tell stories through art. La Serpiente Emplumada y los Cinco Soles brings to life the retelling of the myth of feathers of the feathered serpent, one of the most important deities in, in ancient Mesoamerica. And in Soldado por la Igualdad, Jose La Luz, Science y la Gran Guerra, Tonatiu, using his signature illustration style and Luz's diary entries from the war, tells the story of an American, a Mexican American school teacher and World War I hero and his fight for Latino equality in the United States. He created the League of United Latin American Citizens, which today is the largest and oldest Latino civil rights organization. Um, that is for my presentation, these are some of the, of course, I forgot to go through the slides. Here is a slide of uh, Feather, uh, Feather Serpent. This is Fondado um, um, por la Igualdad and Diego Rivera. And now I am going to have the tremendous pleasure to introduce Andres Piandreu, who will be presenting our final book, Poemas, our beautiful book, um, poemas de Ciencias para Cabras y Libélulas. Andrés P. Andreo is a Cuban-American author of children's books. He has received several acclaimed recognitions, including being selected for, uh, for the White Ravens list. He received the Apple Lemestre uh, Award in 2010, the La Rosa Blanca Awards, which is the Premio Nacional de Literatura Infantil de Cuba twice, and he was also awarded the Premio Campoy Ada de Literatura Infantil de la Academia Norteamericana de la Lengua Española, among others. And um, if I may, I want to translate a quote from Alma Florada about Andres. Uh, she said, Andres is one of the most talented children's authors in Spanish. He writes with great sensitivity on important topics in a unique, tender and insightful style with a delicate sense of humor. Uh, without further ado, take it away. Hello. Can you guys see me and hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, First, uh, my name is Andres Piandreu. I'm all this, uh, what Lisa said about me is, uh, I think it's, it's true. Uh, and <laughs> I'm delighted to, to present this uh, book that was, uh, as a matter of fact, an idea of uh, uh, Santillana's Vistas editors, uh, because uh, there are almost none literature in, po in poetry to introduce the type, uh, the theme of science in the classroom. And uh, I always had uh, the idea of doing this, but I never materialized it or never, you know, uh, put it into in action. So they were like really uh, there and 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 proactive in, in in asking me if I wanted to do it, and of course I, I wanted to do it. It was a, a pleasure to do it since my formation. I'm I'm a nuclear physicist, uh, 
I was my first major, and then I studied a little bit more, and then a master's in, in neurophysics. But, you know, mm-hmm. uh, when I began to write, um, that was it. Oh, I, uh, I spent like 20 years by writing for children. And about the topic is, I think poetry writing allows one to express themselves to written word, no? And it is a great way to release uh, pent up emotions and an exercise, exercise creativity and share thoughts and ideas with other people. So even if you are never uh, written creatively before, you can enjoy the feeling of writing about life when it's rhyming both. You know? So poetry uh, is a great tool for a science teacher. Uh, poetry can have catchy rhymes, uh, humor, and it paints a vivid picture about a topic. So kids commit to things, uh, kids things, uh, commit things to memory uh, easily when they, when they are, you know, when they hear it in rhyme. And there is, for example, why nursery uh, rhymes is so great, no? When they, they want to learn to read and things like that. So uh, to, I think it's a great tool as a literary book and also as a, th- as a book you can use in the classroom to introduce all the topics. And since it uh, touches, I think, all the, stand- the science standards for, I think it's Sky 5, uh, you could always find, uh, you know, a poem that will introduce the theme in your class. And of course it's written in Spanish, but I could, for example, uh, put an example in English. Uh, when, you, when you see the cover of, the, of, the, of this book, uh, the, I mean, the, yeah, the back cover, it, the theme or the book is introduced in rhyme uh, in Spanish and I'm about to read like two or three points for you and, and show you the illustrations before, after I finish my, my speech. <laughs> so, but I have like seven points that are really important why poetry is so important uh, to introduce uh, these themes in, in, in the classroom and, in, and for kids in general, also at home. One, poetry can be used to spark interest, uh, curiosity, and, and get uh, their attention of kids because poems are vivid, but also like shorter. You know, short with kids in the early ages is a plus. Uh, poetry can activate previous knowledge because of course the language you use and the way you put things are almost always metaphorically or similar. Uh, you can catch things in real life. Uh, poetry of course can introduce a topic and a unit and po- poetry can introduce or reinforce vocabulary, which then you can use this daily vocabulary then then becomes academic vocabulary. And of course poetry, poetry can teach facts. And, 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 and I think it's a great tool to inspire writing non-fiction writing too, because when we, we think about informational text, we usually think about a research paper or biography or expository writing, but poems uh, are another great way to, to, to write non-fiction. And this is what I thought it was uh, a challenge and, and, and nice things to do, no? And, and of course, we, with poems, we can give a new perspective on the same information so to get, you know, from other methods. So a great approach is mixing poems with the vivid illustrations of Hector Borlasca, who you're gonna see, he's amazing, and to share uh, the beautiful subject of science. So I wanted to show also that science is not a dry subject. Uh, on the contrary, it's a, it's a very, it's a way of looking at, at, at the world or our life and uh, with a sensi- with sensitivity, sensibility, 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 ah, with sensitivity. <laughs> And wonder and, and, and poems uh, can explore any, any science like biology, physics, uh, chemistry, and, and, and much more. And one example would be, for example, if you really want to know when, when you look at the mirror, you move your right with your left, dogs reach God and things are nearer. Uh, it's, you know, when you want to, how many subjects did you, did you touch in that, you know? So reflection, mirrors, um, how you read, how you read backwards, and that sometimes uh, mirrors have a certain form in which you see things like, uh, you know, when they're in the car, they are nearer than they seem, or fa- uh, further away than they seem. And it's catchy, it's short, and serves as an introduction. So um, let me, uh, let me uh, share my screen so you can see the book, which is, let me see how I do this. Uh, share screen. 
So can can you can you guys see the my screen? Yes. Hold on. Me, okay. There you go. So poemas de ciencia para cabras y libélulas. This is like science poems for goats and 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 fireflies. No. Uh, oh, for that. Dragonflies. Dragonflies. So Dragonflies, yes. So the the um, dragonfly and goat uh, characters, uh, it's like an interaction between both of them, and also like talking about poem uh, topics of science, and they serve as a as a conductor, you know, through the through the story to, to the poems to make it also kind of a kind of a story, and I I put like uh, one poem about the interaction between both animals, every three poems, I think, or every two poems. The first part of the book is, um, wait. Uh, it's, uh, you know, made of um, po um, uh, poems and the second part are, are, is made of riddles. Um, let me put the book here. Mm -hmm. So that was the cover. And um, this is the book as it is, Poemas para, eh, de Ciencia para Cabras y Libélula, um, with uh, great illustrations of uh, Hector Borlasca, who uh, was, uh, I was amazed by, by, the, for the, by the work he did in this one. So uh, I'm going to write, I'm going to read the first um, poem, which is also in the back cover of the book that explains, uh, you know, uh, what is the book about? Quieres saber por qué cuando miras al espejo, al espejo ves la imagen al revés de una carta o un conejo. ¿Por qué existen los cometas? ¿De qué está hecha una pluma? ¿Tiene el cerebro las pulgas? ¿Cuándo migran las tortugas? Si tienes tiempo y paciencia, todo lo explican las ciencias. So basically, it's, you know, it's a base of questions a kid could have, and if you have time and patience, you could read about this in the book uh, through science explanations. And here, the first part is a ciencia cierta which is like science or with a sign in my hand or something like that with um, 73 pages. And the second part is quisicosas enigmáticas, which is like enigmatic things, which are um, riddles. Um, I love the illustrations, by the way, they're colorful and, and great. And I, I really like that the work, the final work is uh, very, is amazing. Um, I will, for example, uh, let me show you. See, this is the interaction between the narrator and, and the goat, and then it comes between the narrator. This is a cycle of water, of water, and this is about the matter, what matter is. For example, I I'm, going to, I'm going to read this one, La Materia. Una chiva, dos pelotas, una pala y una foca. Un pingüino, un submarino, cuatro pelos, mis dos primos. Una estrella, una piscina, dos tortillas, gelatinas. El dibujo de un pepino. El viento que mueve las cosas, las olas que bañan la playa, el perfume de las rosas, satélites, gasolina, el libro de la cucarachita Martina. Todo lo que ocupa espacio, todo lo que tiene masa, es materia. Y eso incluye las alas de una guasasa. Which the guasasa is this little fly that is in, this, in the submarine here. No? And I, I, I love the illustrations. I can say that. This is about energy. This is a, you know, a weather report. A base, a, you, you, you can make like a weather report with, a, with an ice cream. Uh, so depend on the on the on the state of the ice cream, you know how the weather is. Uh, pronóstico con helado. Si hace un día muy soleado, es rico comer helado. Si está si está un poco nublado, hay que guardar el helado bajo un paraguas morado. Si hay tormenta o tornado, hay que poner el helado en un refugio blindado. Si viene helada o nevada, toma sopa bien caliente. Mejor olvida de ese helado que te congela los dientes. So it's like kind of like with humor and also this. And, and, and it introduces the topic of, of, of weather and also uh, temperature. Here is also the narrator with the, with the dragonfly, um, which in this case is morphology, animals and, and how they look and what they do. And then things that uh, rotate, hira uh, hira tío vivo, like things that rotate, uh, things that move in zigzag and things that move, uh, move uh, you know, in, in, in a, like straight, another one from, from narrator and the goat, in this case is about the shadows and light, property of light. Uh, about the planets, 
which is, is funny. Uh, as a matter of fact, Plutón no es una croqueta, es un planeta. Uh, it's like Plutón is not a, a croqueta, it's a planet. Uh, I made this t-shirt, I, I printed it for me. And, and I wore it like uh, for a while, you know, in Spanish, Plutón un croqueta. So I, I'm gonna read that for you. I, I was looking for the, for the t-shirt to wear it in the presentation, but I didn't find it. So, los planetas, la Tierra, Marte y Urano, Júpiter, Venus, Plutón, Mercurio vive sudado, está muy cerca del Sol, Saturno con sus anillos y Neptuno es el más frío. Y ahora leí en mi libreta que Plutón no es un planeta. ¿Qué hago con mi camiseta? So, and then he's wearing, you know, uh, the t-shirt like asking, you know, uh, to rooting for Plutón, no, for Pluto. Uh, about the stars, uh, comets, so, uh, I wrote a poem for each of the, of the standards, but, but that at the same time, I wanted to, to write literature. And the thing is about, about this is that we need good content in our classrooms. Not only, you know, uh, things written for the school, but literature that you can use. It. And authors that write a, a, a literature in a, in a, in a in, um, you know, content with a high uh, quality, but that in the background, in the background you have, you know, a purpose to in the biological way, which is not the same as, you know, when you write specifically for, for um, programs and things like that. Here it's uh, about, uh, you know, the light. I mean, every standard has here a representation. It's about the cycle of a tree, cycle of life, and all this uh, gold and, 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 and fire and dragonfly poem is about a different a science subject. This is about life. For example, La Mosca del Elefante is about uh, everything, you know, starts and, and, and ends. No? Todo lo que nace, muere. Todo lo que sube, baja. Un baobab vive mil años, un mosquito, una semana. Con las hojas, como las hojas de un arce, que son verdes y brillantes, cuando se van marchitando, toman colores radiantes, amarillo, anaranjado, café ocre y beige. Después se caen del árbol y le sirven de sostén. En el suelo se convierten en sustento necesario para que el árbol se nutra, para que crezca a diario. Todo lo que nace muere, no importa forma o tamaño. Una mosca vive un mes, un elefante 100 años. And always in a positive way, and you know, in, in that they, they could, it's catchy, and, and I think humor is a, I think it's the most wonderful tool that a teacher can use to, uh, you know, um, to introduce a, a theme or, or a subject. It's about the you know different seasons. Uh, this is about the different states in which uh, the uh, soil exists in the earth. Um, this is oh this is about um, you know you know I when I was a kid I always had a, a confusion about telescope and microscope and which one was used for one purpose and one for the other. So I thought they kids should have the same you know problem. So I wrote this poem about you know all the instruments you use to see things nearer or, or, far, or farther away and it's called vamos a ver let's see veo veo ballenitas la luna y papita frita veo veo una bacteria y allá lejos una feria el microscopio te acerca lo invisible que está cerca telescopio que está lejos cosas grandes que están lejos lentes para las letritas si no ves si no ves bien de cerquita lupa para las hormigas sus detalles y las migas y las manos de viseras si el, si el brillo del sol te ciega Again, the illustrations, I, I, I love them. So, um, Metro, this is about the same thing, about thermometer, chronometer, podometer, you know, all those things I did, I, I always had it, you know, that was when I was a kid, what were they used for? And it's called Metro because, you know, it's a unit of measurement. So, para la fiebre, un termómetro. Para el tiempo, usa un cronómetro. Miden pasos los podómetros. Cuán rápido, un velocímetro. Para cuán alto, un altímetro. La corriente un amperímetro, sobre el viento un anemómetro, cuenta la lluvia el pluviómetro, longitud con cintas métricas, los temblores un sismógrafo, mide la luz un fotómetro, para la bulla un odímetro. ¿Para qué sirve el taxímetro? So, the taxímetro. So, uh, so we play with uh, humor and also we, we tell them or inform them uh, which, uh, you know, instruments are used to measure certain things. So, as always playa o eso es beach is about contamination and pollution. Uh, water is about the different states of water. Uh, this is the, the super mouse is in reality, you know, about new technologies. Technology is a, is a, is a, is a, is a tale about a super mouse. So it was a, a almighty. And at the end you realize it was a computer mouse. Uh, the, about forces, about, uh, you know, 
Oh, this one, uh, La Balanza. Uh, I love it too. And, and the, 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 the illustrations are great too. So it's, uh, what do you, how do you scale, no? and, and how do you me measure the weight? Uh, and how you do it, no? La Balanza se abalanza. Con ella pesas las cosas, como pétalos de rosa, como la punta de un lápiz o la ceja de un ocapi. Las balanzas tienen pesas que asemejan besitos de chocolate, de plata o con or granate, que se ponen en platillos para parecer un bombillo, un tornillo, o polvillos, o un poquito de membrillo. So, again, playful and, and, and you know, funny. This is about Archimedes Law, about the smells, how they are created, and then the Archimedes Law, and Archimedes and the duck, Archimedes y el pato. I, I, I laughed a lot when, after I wrote it, because I, I, I read it like three times in a row, and I, I kept laughing. So I, I'm going to read it for you. Hace una pila de años, un científico muy loco descubrió cómo los barcos flotan hundiéndose un poco. Se sumergió en una tina a darse un baño caliente cuando su pato de goma miró flotando de frente. Hizo cálculos enormes, hundió el pato, lo sacó y al cabo de media hora su mente se alumbró. Eureka, todo pato sumergido dentro de este fluido experimenta una fuerza que lo empuja hacia arriba igual al peso del agua que el pato empuja en la tina. So we are like... Uh, in verse, we are like uh, explaining Archimedes' law to the kids, and they will, you know, of course, go into the, <laughs> into the, and take a bath and try to see and, 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 and emulate what Archimedes found there. Um, about the different north, south, east, and, and west, uh, this is about the magnets, and I, of course, like, um, elected the subject of these little magnet things you put in your fridge, and um, it's also like, I, I like this one a lot too. Um, so uh, that, this is the part of, you know, the, the, um, the poems. Uh, Oda al tiburón y al, al tiburilo del cocoburón. It's like when you imagine an animal that is half a shark and half a um, crocodile. And <laughs> Precavido Pere is about, you know, being careful and, and the safety measurements scientific, uh, you have need to have in the lab when you do like, an experiment. And Kisikosa Enigmaticas is are the riddles. So um, uh, about light, wind, uh, rain, um, uh, the thunder, and here is a, an earthquake, uh, um, a magnet, a meteorite, um, you know, different ones. And this is, for example, I, I want to read it to you. And if you know Spanish, you, I guess you, you're gonna know the answer, but it's this type of riddle that is the same type of all riddles. I try to have the same approach to it. So, empiezan en cero y pueden contar los granos que hay en una cuchara llenita de sal, las gotas de agua que llenan el mar, los pelos de todos los perros que hay, y como el silencio, el tiempo y soñar no tienen final. So, which of course are the numbers. And well, uh, I think like, you know, humor, tenderness and, and, and sweetness and, and uh, we, can, we can mix it in, in, in poetry and get like beautiful results with it. This is about the computer, which is at the end, it's like a, a, it's a TV that marries a, um, what? a typewriter and also the rainbow. So uh, basically this is the book and this is the Indice Tematico uh, it's like the themes, how they're related here, like adaptations, plant adaptation, page 28, adaptation, uh, animal adaptation. So all these are the subjects you can find um, in the book. And all the poems are, you know, cover all the standards and, uh, you know, Buddha and all of them. So this is um, what I wanted to show you. And um, I, I really, really like the work uh, we studied in this uh, book, and I hope you know it goes to every classroom, not only here but everywhere, because I think really think is a is, is a good tool, and also as a as a literature uh, book and experience. I hope uh, you know everybody enjoys enjoys it. So I, I I hope I didn't extend myself too much. Thank you so much, Andres, and thank you, Lizette. Um, thank you so much to everyone and all the presenters that were here. Thank you to all the attendees. We really appreciate everyone that joined us today.
This was the last event of the Reforma LA Spanish Book Fair. Please visit reformala.org backslash blog backslash book fair to register and attend any future events that we may have. Uh, we do want to thank, um, we want to extend our gratitude to all the distributors and publishers who presented in our Reforma LA Spanish Book Fair. Thank you to the organizing committee for putting these book fairs together. Thank you all of you for attending one or all of the sessions of this series. We hope that you enjoyed the presentations and that you are able to acquire the excellent materials presented for your work locations. We are the Los Angeles Chapter of Reforma, the National Association to Promote Library and Information Services to Latinos and the Spanish Speaking. If you would like to support Reforma, consider becoming a member, volunteering, or donating. Go to reforma.org backslash get involved to find out more. As promised, now we will announce the winner of the book bundle worth over $200. Uh, my colleague Edwin Rodarte has used his uh, super great, awesome tech skills to randomly select a winner. And Edwin? Yes, thank you. I was just unmuting myself. Um, and so I'll also show my camera so you guys can see me. So what I did is I just posted, uh, I extracted all of the participants that register for all of our sessions. And so they're all in here in the spreadsheet. And we're just randomly going to use an online randomizer to select the winner. So I'm just going to go ahead and spin this, this wheel. And then whatever number it lands on, that's going to be the winner. Uh, so good luck to everybody. <laughs> it looks like number 139. So 139, we will go back to the spreadsheet and find number 139, who is Seda Moser. So Seda Moser gets the $200 worth of uh, books uh, and um, we will be contacting her via email so that she can receive those funds. So thank again, thank you everybody that attended today. Uh, we hope to see you in other future events for Reforma LA.